The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. What is it like to visit heaven and Jesus? And then, what's it like to leave it all again? Hi, I'm your host, Lee Whitting, for this week's exploration of the near-death experience on IN's NDE Radio. This week I'm traveling to Sedona, Arizona for a few days, so this show was pre-recorded at the International Association for Near-Death Studies Conference last Labor Day weekend in Washington, D.C. I'm speaking with Yvonne Sneeden, who told me about her amazing meeting with Jesus. Okay, well, we're recording this for uh, the IONS website and perhaps for YouTube. Uh, in order to publicize the fact that we're doing an NDE radio show uh, through IANS and through Talk Zone Radio. And uh, as part of that, we're doing an interview with Yvonne Sneeden. That's right. Okay. And um, I'm going to ask you about, uh, about your near-death experience. I guess that's where we should start. But um, before that, tell, tell us a little about what you do, where you're from, and so forth. Yes, uh, I am actually, my name is Yvonne Sneden, as you said, and uh, I'm French from Europe, and I grew up in uh, Belgium, lived a few years in France, and uh, when I was over there, I worked, uh, as far as my career goes, in diplomacy, uh, in uh, a consulate, in an embassy, and later on, uh, a lobby, a Scandinavian lobby for the European Union. And then I moved to the U.S. about 11 years ago. Uh, In parallel to my uh, professional career, I uh, devoted uh, most of my time um, to to Christianity, to a church. Actually, I was very uh, active uh, prior to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. What uh, denomination of church was it? Uh, it was a non-denominational church, so which means that uh, they try to not be categorized in one category of denominations. Uh, at the end, it become a denomination as well, a non-denominational church. So yes, that's kind of that, funny. That has become a denomination, yes. it's not a denomination. <laughs> and was this in Belgium, where you? Yes, were? Uh, first in Belgium, and then I went to uh, France for. Seminary. Uh, I took uh, some sabbatical years at uh, work at the embassy, and then I went for a solid year to just learn uh, more about uh, theology, and then I came back to the Belgium, and uh, that was it. Now, how old were you when you had your near-death experience? Um, well, it was in 2008. Okay. <laughs> That's all you need to say. We won't ask you more than that. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, about five years ago, and uh, actually, um, it was here in the U.S. Okay. And uh, tell us about it. Tell us what happened. Okay. Um, I, as I said, I uh, I was very involved in church and a very strong believer in God already, uh, but. Um, uh, my life uh, f- shifting from Europe and here, I had had a lot, uh, many traumatic, emotionally, uh, emotionally traumatic events in my life, and it, they were adding one after the other. And uh, in 2008, uh, it's actually probably all I could bear, maybe as emotionally in my life. I wouldn't go here through the uh, the, um, the video, but it, there were some traumatic events that you have in one lifetime. I had four or five, uh, for four or five different people, so it was quite heavy, even if it doesn't look like that. And uh, so my life, I felt at some point in my life that I was uh, reaching, I was not suicidal, um, but I felt I was reaching the end of my energy of life and it's very difficult to explain that to somebody because they think well you were suicidal you were depressed Uh, no it was really the energy we have to live that's actually implanted in us 
that was completely depleted. And uh, I called my sister a week before the event, and I said to my sister, I think I'm dying. I can feel I am dying. I can feel it's going to happen soon. And a week later, I was uh, in my house, um, laying on the sofa, not feeling well. And uh, out of a sudden, I started to feel every organs of my body shutting down. And one by one. And then it, while, while it was doing that, I was getting out of my body. So I didn't feel the, uh, the physical uh, pain of it. One moment I was on my bed, uh, on, on the sofa. Mm -hmm. One moment I was there. The other moment I was in heaven. I didn't go through a tunnel. Uh, I didn't go through a light from a distance. I was immediately transplanted in the light, as you can see. And um, it's like when you're driving in the fog, in a very foggy morning, uh, and you cannot see anything around you, and you feel that fog all around you. That's how the light was. There was no end, no beginning, but it was all made of light instead of fog. So that's how I was translated in that. Did you see any other um, people or spirits? Uh, or were you by yourself? I was completely by myself. And that light actually was, I was in a state of effervescence. Mm -hmm. I felt myself in a pure joy, happiness, care, worry-free completely. And, uh, and just in that state of well-being, no, imagine all the negative I have in me was completely gone. And it was just a fullness of peace and joy. And I was on my own. When suddenly, from a distance, I saw something. And what did and you see? Do you want me to tell you? Of course. <laughs> uh, so I am in that light, and suddenly, coming towards me, I see an energy coming to towards me. Just imagine a flame of fire on people. Can, that's how I explain it in general. You imagine a flame of, of fire that, that actually move around like that. Yeah. But instead of fire, it's energy of light. Imagine that energy. And on top of the energy, there was a, st a type of face. But I knew it was Jesus. And some people ask me, well, how did you know it? Uh, maybe it was your mind you were thinking. And the beautiful thing in heaven is that there is no space for doubts, uh, which is kind of a stressful emotion. Yes. Uh, there is no stressful emotion in heaven. It was downloaded to me. I knew it was a knowing. This is Jesus. And he came towards me, whirling like that around. And then he just engulfed me with that, his body, which was made of energy. And he just totally engulfed me. And at the same time, I felt him in me. And um, at that moment, I felt the love of a father and a mother blend in one. It was not a he, it was not a she. It was one. And it makes me think that on earth, Love has been kind of divided into the male type of love and female type of love. So maybe we can experience those two different uh, love. But in heaven, and it seems like Jesus had blended them both. So he wasn't a he or she. He had both together like the ideal parents. Like the love you have for an, that the ideal parents, the ones that have not hurt you or traumatized you, really the perfect ideal parents. Yes, and um, and when it, when that when he engulfed me like that, oh yes, and uh, he kissed my face uh, like um, a mother of, would kiss her newborn baby. You know, you so much, uh, you so much love for your newborn baby that you've kissed the whole face, and you go, and he kissed my my whole face, and I don't want to be uh, sacrilege, uh, doing any sacrilege here, but he even kissed my lips in a very pure way, like a mother kissed the whole face of the baby, 
everywhere like that. And I think I, I experienced that because I didn't grow up with my parents. So maybe he wanted to make sure I get the love of the parents, the ideal parents. And that was beautiful. And I felt loved. I felt, for the first time in my life, I felt I was with my parents and they were loving me and they were caring for me. And like a child who is four years old and the parents, uh, you're on your parents' laps and you feel like nothing can happen to you because they are holding you. No one can harm you because you are theirs. And that's what I felt with Jesus. I was his. In a way, not in a possessive way, but in a way like a protective, a loving, protective way. I'm here for you. Did you sense that he was speaking or communicating any thoughts to you? Yes, and uh, I'm glad you're bringing that, uh, Lee, because in he- in heaven or on the other side, I like to say, some people say on the other side when you're dead, I like to say heaven because it's generally what people use. So it will define, everyone can re- relate to it when we say heaven, even people that have never experience in an NDA, if we say heaven, they they can just project a location and it's easier. Uh, So in heaven, and it gives a good feeling when you think of heaven more than on the other side. And uh, so in heaven, we are not communicating with the mouth. It's from thought to thought. And I, I would say it more than thought to thought. It's from knowing to knowing. It's from heart to heart. It's the impression and the emotion that is actually imprinted in you from the other person. And you understand immediately 100% what the person means. So that's how we were communicating. You would say the, the, better, the word that we can relate to is telepathy. We were communicating telepathically. So what did you learn? What I learned uh, about uh, when I was there um, and just... Um, was all this the fi- how it is to, in heaven? What is he- what is my heaven? Heaven, I know that heaven is so vast that there are many many le- location and uh, there is one scripture where Jesus says there are many mansion yes. in my Father's house. So I, there are many places. Uh, the he- where I went, uh, it was. It made me realize that when we are not here, the, the life we have after, the, the place we actually call home, the, with a capital H, is a place of tremendous love, tremendous compassion, a tremendous understanding and um, Forgiveness, I mean, not even forgiveness, because the forgiveness is implied that you have done something wrong. It's it's just an unconditional love. I, I felt that, and I because and I experienced it myself, in the sense that when I arrived there, I was completely exhausted emotionally, uh, psychologically, and physically from from the life I was leading here. And at some point, I said to Jesus. Um, that I was very tired and exhausted of my life on earth because many, the majority of people, I'll say the way I felt it, yes. uh, that it's a world. I would say that it's a world where many people are mean, uh, t- uh, selfish, uh, self-centered. And I said to Jesus, I don't want to go back to that world where people are mean, selfish, and self-centered. I want to stay here because what I was learning there was that there is another dimension, uh, an awakening where actually love can be lived and can be experienced. And that was one of the learning uh, of my experience there at that moment with Jesus. Was was that something that that he communicated to you or was it something that you observed while you were there? I observed while I was there, uh, Lee, because, I mean, Je- Jesus, the fact that he touched you, that he, as soon as I was in the light, it's not even when Jesus was with me, as soon as I was in the light, uh, the light perme- permeated love. Mm-hmm. That's actually, 
the the ingredient of heaven there is every single thing is love so and and Jesus is even more love and maybe there are other and and, and be, beings over there are even uh, are full of love of that love that actually emanated from from the creator of all that's how I call him because I don't want to give a name that will it's the creator of all that's how I call it. And uh, I, I met angels. I saw some angels. Yeah, that's what I was... Yes. yes, whether you had seen actually other beings and uh, and perhaps an environment. You know, sometimes we hear of fields or beautiful gardens or a city or, or as you said, many mansions. Uh, is that Was there something along those lines that you witnessed? Uh, so Yes, some of them. Uh, I was working with Jesus. He was taking me uh, after I said I'm tired of this world. He actually uh, uh, filled me. He said, I'm, "I will fill you with the energy of life." So, you, and he filled me with a tremendous energy, like when you see on the um, medical uh, documentary when you see a skeleton and then a liquid which is instilled to explain how that product worked better than the other. That's how I felt. I felt that energy it's flowing, into, flowing into me, into the extreme uh, gene of my being, the proton, everything I was, was completely filled with that energy of life. It was amazing. And uh, at at that point, uh, Jesus just took me towards a city. He was walking to my left. He he was about 5'10", walking to my left, the Jesus we portray, he had his robe, and I'm saying that for the listener that were wondering. Um, and we were walking towards a, a magnificent city. And I saw from a distance a, a lot of buildings, mm-hmm. but they were made of crystal. They were so brilliant. They were so shining and so glowing that they were looking like they were made of crystal. And the, 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 the sky was extremely blue, but there, were no, there was no sun. It was just permeating light because in heaven everything is light. There is no darkness. There is no uh, night. Imagine a world where everything is always brilliant and glowing of light. And that's what I saw. And I was walking with Jesus towards that direction. And suddenly I feel like somebody is coming to my right. And I turn around and and I saw uh, a dozen of children angels. And they were dressed in white robe. They had silverish type of hair, wavy mid hair. And they were, uh, the color was bronze. It's like a, a, a mix of all the race, color and race we have here on earth. It was like the, the mix of everything. And that was their color. It was amazingly beautiful. And they were walking too towards that city. We were all going there. And one of them looked at me. And it was like he was very, it was very normal I was there. And then he turns and looked at Jesus and his face shone. And all the other little angel, uh, young angels ran into his arms. And he took them all like that in his arms with a lot, a tremendous love. And telepathically he said to them, it's Yvonne's time. Like he was taking care of me right at that moment with a lot of love and no rejection feeling. But with a lot of love, he said, it's Yvonne time. And so, and he said, go back to your teachers. And then so the, the angels left. And I turned around to look at where they were going. And there were, um, and I will say it, uh, that was my experience. There were the most beautiful women angels waiting there with long white robe. And they were, I knew they were angels. Uh, I could see the the feature of what you think of an angel with small, uh, tiny wings. It was, and they were magnificent glowing of light. Imagine a body which is the skin, and instead of muscles and blood inside and nerves, it's all pure pure light. And they were glowing like that and looking at me with love, Compa- uh, acceptance, unity, respect, dignity, veneration—in a not in the putting me in a high pedestal. I think 
it was more that's how we treat one another in heaven we treat each other with respect with uh, consideration and that's how, and they were smiling and loving me and say you're one of us and it was the type the feeling I got is they will never harm me they will never one single moment hurt me that's the love I could that they were reflecting on me the pure love and it was amazing and we were all going towards that amazing city and did you get to the city? well uh, we were walking there and I would I enter it and then you know that's another thing about NDEs uh, NDE experiencers sometimes some of your experience is the memory is blocked because they don't want you because of the fact that sometimes you cannot know the experience you had in heaven otherwise you will not come back on earth or on earth you will not accomp- you will not want to live you want to go back yes. so he knew i didn't want to come back jesus knew that i didn't want to come back so uh, i i have a feeling i experienced some things there but i haven't i cannot remember and right after that that's when jesus told me he loves humanity he loves every one of us he said ivan I love everybody. So the scene, uh, it's difficult to explain in human words because in, um, when, you have, when you're in that other dimension, time is not the same as here. Uh, you can live one minute here and the same amount, and when you're on the other side or in heaven, you can live three months and it's one minute here because it's a different notion of time. So and sometimes the sequence are not necessarily a, a, con- a logic continuation. It's all what's m- important for you to learn that's actually popping in. Like at some point, Jesus showed me something about my personal life, and a screen appeared, and he explained to me things about that. So it's imagine holograms, but solid ones appearing, and that's how it felt. And when when um, uh, when Jesus said and I don't want to emphasize I know that other people have not seen Jesus they have seen the being of light uh, but Jesus is the being of light the being of, it, it's the same he's the light of the creator to me the, uh, according to my experience and he said to me Yvonne I love my babies and when he meant my babies, he meant, and he said, he said it after, he said, I love humanity. I love humanity. I love my babies, he said. Um, and it means every one of us, no, regardless of where we come from, our life, our gender, our race, anything happened in our life, he loves every, he, she, love everybody, uh, completely and perfectly and I said oh yeah I know you <laughs> you were Jesus you came on earth to teach love so no wonder that's what I kind of was thinking and then he said to me I'll show you how and when he said that um, he took the my heart and then he put my heart in his heart and we became one and it was a complete oneness, a complete, it's actually a merge, we merged together as one. And for a few minutes, I could actually uh, feel each emotion Jesus had for, the, for humanity. And Lee, that's the, that's the moment where I cannot express that with human words. It's way beyond any vocabulary we have. Imagine billions and billions of waves of compassion and love and forgiveness and kindness and goodness and, and light and purity. Waves just going and for us and carrying us, carrying us through, lifting us through. It was just, it's difficult to explain that, that one experience. It was just beyond this world, we can say it. And it was just, you know, there's one other scripture that says, 
there's a prayer Jesus said when he was on earth he said God let us be one like you and I are one and you know let them be one with me like you and I are one and that is exactly what I felt and experienced wow. what a gift And then how did you come to be back in your body? Um, right after that incredibly magnificent experience, which is uh, life transforming, right after that I had a knowing that mm, it was it. It was time to come back. That all what he wanted, uh, Jesus wanted to communicate with me. And... When I, when I had that realization, it's, it's time to go back, I just came back. It's naturally, and you know, sometimes I can imagine with, for people that never had any other experience, how sometimes they wonder how that's possible. And, but there is no pain. Uh, to me, there was no pain. It was like you re-enter your body, and suddenly you're back in your body. And here you are, and it's, It's like it's like you were home and suddenly you're in another in another home temporarily. Yes. Yes. It was just amazing. And and the message I have, it's love, it's compassion. That's what I learned. It's the dimension, the degree of love that we can achieve even on earth. That if we let ourselves go and uh, if I know that since childhood, we have all been trained on earth to believe in certain pattern of life. And uh, we are all following that pattern that we, we have decided is the reality. And I feel, uh, Lee, that um, we went from trauma to trauma because every one of us started with that purity of heaven, that pure love, that pure light that I experienced in heaven. And we all started with it. But as life goes on, everyone has been hurt, everyone has been rejected, everyone has hurt. So with the years that goes on, we have kind of built some stronghold around us. Uh, and we have decided to just kind of leave, to give love to a certain measure. And uh, having a near that experience is actually breaking those strongholds and letting the, the flow of love uh, like a spring just flow out again and uh, and and if it, there have a message is that uh, it's possible it's possible to to live that and to open up again uh, for anyone who listens who has been hurt in life uh, that's who we really are we are love we are beings of love well thank you thank you so much for uh, sharing this sharing your experience with me and with Everyone out there who's, who's watching, and um, uh, this is this is the message that uh, I think it's uh, that we want to concentrate on on NDE Radio, and uh, you, so you've you've given us a great gift by telling us about the gift that was given to you. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lee. Right. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks again to Yvonne Sneeden and to all our listening audience. We'll be back next Monday, 11 a.m. East Coast time on nderadio.org. In the meantime, check out the IANS website at iands.org. Thanks for listening to NDE Radio.